If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. See, the old has passed away, and everything has been made new. Great is the Lord, and worthy of all praise. Amen. Amen. Praise, praise and glory and, glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honor, power and might, be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. these words of scripture love one another for love is of God and whoever loves is born of God and knows God spirit of God search our hearts let us in silence remember our need for God's forgiveness
Let us confess our sins to God. God of mercy, we have sinned against you and against others. We have sinned in what we have done and in what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for our sins. Forgive us all that is past and raise us to newness of life. Amen. Almighty God, who pardons all who truly repent, forgive your sins, strengthen you by the Holy Spirit, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let, let us rejoice in the rock of our salvation. We sing to you, O God, and bless your name. And tell, and tell your, your salvation, salvation from, from day, day to day. We proclaim your glory to the nations. Your, your praise, praise to the ends of the earth. Hallelujah. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing his praise in the congregation of the faithful. Let Israel rejoice in his maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them dance, praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praise to him with timbrel and harp. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people and adorns the poor with victory. Let the faithful rejoice in triumph. Let them be joyful on their beds. Let the praises of God be in their throat and a two-handed sword in their hand. Uh, to wreak vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples, to bind their kings in chains and their nobles with links of iron, to inflict on them the judgment decreed. This is glory for all his faithful people. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Owe no one anything except to love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word, love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the words of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. The response to the first reading is the song of Zechariah. Blessed are you, O Lord our God. You have come to your people and set them free. You have raised up for us a mighty Savior born of the house of your servant David. Through your holy prophets you promised of old that you would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hated us. You promised to show mercy to our forebears and to remember your holy covenant. This was the oath you swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship you without fear, Holy and righteous in your sight, all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way, to give God's people knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Good morning, everyone.
A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said, If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly, I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am among them. Hear what the Spirit is, is saying to the church. The response to the second reading is to Deum Ladamus. We praise you, O God. We acclaim you as the Lord. All creation worships you, the Father everlasting. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing an endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, our advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became incarnate to set us free, you humbly accepted the Virgin's womb. You overcame the scene of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come to be our judge. Come then, O Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to the glory everlasting. Let us now together affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. The Lord bless you. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Make your ways known upon earth, O God. Your saving power among all peoples. Renew your church in holiness. And help us to serve you with joy. Guide the leaders of this and every nation. That justice may prevail throughout the world. Let not, let not the needy, O God, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Make us instruments of your peace. 
and let, let your glory be over all the earth. Grant us, O Lord, to trust in you with all our hearts. For as you always resist the proud who confide in their own strength, so you never forsake those who make their boast of your mercy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Holy and ever-living God, by your power we are created, and by your love we are redeemed. Guide and strengthen us by your Spirit, that we may give ourselves to your service and live each day in love to one another and to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So as many of you may know, I was a teacher for several years prior to entering seminary and then the ordained ministry. And although I taught in several places, it was the four years that I spent in a high school on the west side of Chicago that had the biggest impact. This was a school in one of the most blighted neighborhoods in the city, arguably one of the most blighted neighborhoods in our nation. And about four years ago, I had the opportunity to briefly visit there again. Shortly after taking my current position here at St. Bart's, I attended a week-long workshop on transitional ministry in Chicago. And just before leaving to head back home, I visited my former supervisor and mentor at the school where I had taught some 15 years earlier. He told me about some recent training and development he had done in the area of classroom management, an area in which he claimed to be rather weak. Now, for the record... I have to note that by comparison, I was far weaker. My first year as a teacher there, any day where neither human nor heavy object went flying out the classroom window, was a good day. But all of that aside, I had an opportunity to see his training in action as I observed one class period before heading to the airport. What I saw was fascinating. The opening routines of the class period held students to a standard that was nearly impossible to keep. Within the span of three short minutes, they needed to settle into class, take care of any necessary housekeeping like sharpening pencils, turn in homework, and solve a problem that by itself would likely have taken the entire three minutes, if not more. Almost no one succeeded in meeting the standard. But the thing that fascinated me was the energy in the classroom. Far from being frustrated or bitter, The students seemed excited. They seemed to be energized by the challenge and not particularly bothered by the fact that it was always slightly out of reach. My friend explained to me that this was precisely the point. Part of his new classroom management technique was beginning each day with the expectation that the students would be quicker and more efficient than they had ever been before, always setting the bar a bit higher than they could reasonably be expected to achieve. Now this seemed counterintuitive 
to me at first. Conventional wisdom, especially in that neighborhood, is that teenagers have it rough enough already. The last thing they need is teachers barking at them and constantly expecting more out of them, never being quite satisfied. But that's exactly what my friend was doing. And from what I saw, the students responded with alacrity, enthusiasm, and surprisingly joyful spirits. In an environment where I remember disruptive behavior being commonplace, I saw none of that whatsoever. Reflecting a bit further, I'm now not surprised by this. It makes sense. And perhaps this is the way that God is right now seeking to manage the classroom that we call Earth and the human race. Things seem to be spiraling out of control right now, don't they? For people in areas of the world and walks of life where they're used to that, this year dominated by the COVID crisis and several other crises is perhaps not quite so jarring. But for us in the more affluent parts of the Western world, this marks a huge shift. For centuries now, the goal of human existence here in the Western world has been to tame the untamable and make earthly life something that feels sustainably safe and secure. We've sought to design an infrastructure that protects us from all the dangers of the natural world. We've built up financial structures that we've convinced ourselves are too big to fail. We've engineered medical systems that we're supposed to be able to trust to cure or prevent every disease. Now, although it's not the primary point of this sermon, I want to spend just a moment longer on that last point. I believe we've fallen for the illusion, and I know I may be making myself immensely unpopular here, but it is merely an illusion that a medical system of our own creation has the capacity to save and protect us from every threat. Every time we fear our bodies faltering or failing, we turn to it with the blind faith that somehow it can save us. But the actual evidence simply doesn't back that up. Are you aware that although life expectancies have risen in the last century, there is one and only one reason for that? Infant and child mortality have dropped precipitously. But for someone who survives past the age of 18, life expectancy has not changed since the early part of the 20th century. In spite of all of our supposed advances in medicine, neither quantity nor quality of life has increased. And there is some evidence that they are now both on the decline. Now, I'm certainly not saying that there is no place for modern science and medicine in our lives. I am, however, suggesting that we have inadvertently built systems that routinely offer us promises they will never be able to keep. And perhaps it's time for us to examine that a bit more critically. And it's certainly not just our medical system. We've built all kinds of systems in which we place more faith than they merit. So I believe that what God is doing with us right now may be very much analogous 
to what my friend in Chicago does with his classrooms. We are the students, and the goal, the assignment at hand, is solid peace and joy. God has challenged us with achieving it, but the goal seems always a bit out of our reach. Only it isn't. We've just not been looking in the right places. And while that has a huge amount to do with why it feels like we're in such a mess right now, it's also perhaps giving us the greatest opportunity we've ever had. So long as we keep scrambling to find salvation in things of our own creation, we're going to keep winding up in greater and greater trouble. But if we train our gaze on the only reliable source of salvation, we will get a very different result. In both today's epistle and gospel, we're told in no uncertain terms about the power of prayer and living in faith. Paul tells the believers in Rome to put on the Lord Jesus Christ, making no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. In other words, to put all of our trust and energy in Christ and none of it in devices of our own creation. In the gospel, Jesus tells his disciples that if even two of us truly agree on anything, it will be done for us by our Father in heaven. So what if in this moment of chaos, we have an opportunity to stop pursuing joy and peace in places where they can never fully be found and start instead seeking them where they can. As I pass through these days of crisis, I find myself increasingly convinced that there is no help in all of the modern structures, be they political, financial, medical, or anything else that we have built to protect ourselves. Faced with big enough challenges, and I believe that we are rapidly hitting that point, all of these structures crumble. So how about we stop striving for peace and joy through them and take an entirely different course instead? How about we do the simplest and most powerful thing that human beings can do? How about we pray? Let's pray in silence. Let's pray out loud. Let's pray individually. Let's pray as families. Let's pray as community. Let's see if we can actually get to where two or more of us truly agree. And let's see what wonders our Father in Heaven will do with that. I believe that in a strange and subtle way, it is prayer that I was witnessing in the first three minutes of class as my friend in Chicago was offering it. The students knew full well they were facing a challenge that they had little to no hope of meeting by their own devices. And yet they stepped out in faith to give it their absolute best, trusting that grace would accomplish the rest. And it was obvious they found tremendous joy and satisfaction in doing that. We can do the same. 
eternal peace and joy are things we are never going to find in fullness here on earth. But if we seek them through prayer, I believe we will find greater happiness, satisfaction, and even safety than we have ever known before. Let's take all of that energy that we so often focus elsewhere and turn all of it toward a conversation with God. Now, this will not protect us from every outward danger, but as current circumstances so amply demonstrate, nothing will. It will, however, draw us heavenward, and that is the only place in which what we so desperately seek will be found. Thank you for that, Andy. Let us pray in joy and hope to our God, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. O God, you have made your church as an immense instrument to reconcile all people to you and to one another. Shower your grace upon all people and assemblies of faith that our life together might reflect your divine life ever more perfectly. Today we pray for, especially for the Anglican Communion, including Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, and the Anglican Church of Southern Africa. Pour out your blessings also upon the Episcopal Church in this land and our diocese, including Michael, our presiding bishop, Mark, our bishop, and St. Crispin's Church in San Francisco. Let your blessing also come to our fellow faith assemblies in this community, especially Congregation Beth Emick in Pleasanton. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, in whom mercy and justice embrace, we ask you to pour out your spirit upon the nations and peoples, of the world. Bend the hearts of all nations and peoples toward peace and righteousness. Send your spirit especially upon Donald, our president, Gavin, our governor, John, our mayor, and all who serve in legislative assemblies or judicial roles in this and every land. Lord, Hear our prayer. O God of perfect health and wholeness, in this time of pandemic, in the fear of an an uncertainty that surrounded, we lift up to you all those who care for the sick and the suffering. Pour out a special blessing upon all who follow your call to care for others in body, mind, and spirit, especially all nurses, doctors, police, firefighters, Brad O and Brad S. Give them the gifts of courage and joy in their work and protect them from all adversity and harm. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, who is love, This congregation lives as a people, blessed by your grace, and ever seeking to know and experience you more fully. Bless all its members with the gifts of hope, wisdom, and compassion. Pour out a special blessing on these members of the weekly cycle of prayer. Dave and Mary, Tom and Barbara, Sally, Michael, and Charity as well as those in military service, Aaron, Joey, Abigail, Valerie, Amber, 
Christopher and Taylor. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray also for all who suffer in body, mind, and spirit, especially those who have requested our prayers for healing and wholeness. We pray for Olivia, Beth, Bob, Kathy, Kathy, Chris, Jessica and Nesta, Dave, Dottie, Elda, Aaron, Esteban, Fabian A., Glennis, Geraldine, Umberto, Candida and family, Janice, Leah, Luke, Mark G., Monty and Judy, Nan D., Michael, Sandra, and Mom, Sharon, Steve W., and children, Yunus, the Sherman family, the Colmer family, the Cairo family, the Lodel family, the Drake Owen family, the Mabe family, the Turnbull family, and St. Saint- Teresa of Calcutta Mission. We send healing prayers, continued healing prayers, to the people of Beirut, Lebanon, for all those affected by the wildfires in California and those affected by Hurricane Laura in Louisiana and Texas. And we have joyous birthday blessings and wishes for Mary M., Barbara R., Andy L., and Jason C. Give to your people the gifts of comfort and healing, as well as a lively and abiding faith in your goodness throughout all circumstances. Lord, hear our prayer. O God of the living and the dead, in the passion and resurrection of Christ, you made death the gateway to new and eternal life. Pour that life upon all your servants departed this life, especially Walt D., Wilma M., Matthew S., Robert T., Sonia C., Haney N., Richard F., Olga M., Joseph C., Nihao L., Alice D., Betty T., Elizabeth, Andrew M., and Father George E. And raise them to everlasting glory in your presence. Lord, hear our prayer. And now, Lord, of wonder, in great hope, we pray to you with hearts and voices for our own needs and concerns. We offer you thanks for all the blessings of this life.
O Lord, as we approach a holiday upon which we honor labor, we give you thanks for the labor upon which our common life relies, and we ask that you would bless all those who work with joy, with fair compensation, with safety, and give to them and to all of us the gift of putting our full faith and trust in your invisible goodness. All this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit 
be with us all evermore. Amen. Go now to love and serve the Lord. Go in peace. Amen. We We go go in in the the name name of Christ. Christ. Hallelujah!